this service, we are looking at manifesting the supernatural part one. The supernatural is operating in dimension beyond scientific understanding. Is operating in dimensions that is beyond scientific understanding. Where science cannot phantom out. Our world is ruled by science. A woman came out recently and said she has found uh, the treatment and the cure for COVID-19. And all medical science rose up to nullify and to neutralize all of our arguments. Because until science says so, the world will not approve. But when the supernatural is in operation, it nullifies every scientific understanding. Number two, the supernatural is manifesting in superhuman spheres that defy the law of nature. If it's manifesting in superhuman atmosphere that defiles the law of nature. When the supernatural is in operation, the law of nature is suspended. Natural laws are broken. The Bible is full of the supernatural because many natural laws are suspended. The law of gravity was suspended by many ascensions and raptures that took place in scripture. Elijah went up by rocket of fire. Jesus went up with the speed of light to heavens. Hear me, laws are suspended. Iron head began to swim on the water when Elijah put a stick on the water. We also saw that the law of anatomy was suspended and neutralized when Lazarus came back to life after four days. The Bible page to page is full of supernatural occurrences that suspended natural laws. What is the supernatural? The supernatural is a manifestation of events. Number three is a manifestation of events that is considered to be of spiritual and infinite origin. <laughs> it is a manifestation of events that is considered to be of spiritual and infinite origin. Number four, the supernatural is an order of existence that strives beyond the realm of visibility and tangibility. I repeat, the supernatural is an order of existence that is that it is order of existence that strives beyond the realm of visibility, it strives beyond the realm of tangibility. Number five, the supernatural is a departure from what is normal into what is abnormal or into what is paranormal is somebody hearing what i'm saying it is departure from what is normal from what is natural to what is paranormal to manifest the supernatural there are certain bodies that must be activated the supernatural is not what you just wake up and operate under the supernatural requires that you press certain buttons. Button number one to manifest the supernatural is to partner with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the governor of the spiritual realm. The Holy Spirit is the governor of spirit realm. Hear me sir. Holy Ghost is the architect and the chief engineer of the supernatural. Not to partner with him is to be empty of the supernatural. Hear me, the believer is born from the womb of the spirit. John chapter 6, chapter 3, I beg your pardon, and verse 6, I love what the, the message translation said. John chapter 3 and verse 6 through to verse 8, can we have it shoot on the screen quickly? John 3 and verse 8. When you look at a baby, it's just that a body you look at and touch. But the person who takes shape within is from something you cannot see or touch. The spirit. And it becomes a living spirit. Lift up your hands I'm a living spirit. So don't be surprised when I tell you that you have to be born from above. Out of this world, so to speak. Lift up your hands and say, I am out of this world. Lift up your hands and say, everything about me is out of this world. Uh -huh. For you know well... And of how the wind blows the way and that you hear the rustling through the trees. But you have no idea where it comes from and where it is headed next. That is the way it is with everyone. Somebody shout everyone. 
Born from above by the wind of God, by the spirit of God. Lift up your hands and say, I am born of the spirit of God. The Bible said the materials, James chapter 1 verse 18, the materials that produced Jesus was the same material that produced us. John 1, 1, the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word was the same in the beginning with God. And then verse James chapter 1 and verse 18, he brought us to life. How? Using the true word. Showing us off as the crown of his creature. Lift up your hands and say, my existence took its roots from the word of God. Lift up your hands and say, born of the word, born of the spirit. So outside the spirit, sir, there is no born again. The believer will lack spiritual identity once he operates outside the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the equalizer and the stabilizer of the Godhead and mankind. The Holy Spirit is the regulator of the temperature of the supernatural. To partner with the Holy Spirit sir, is to make access. Is for us to embrace the supernatural and, and embrace divinity in totality. Any man that partners with the Holy Ghost has embraced the supernatural. Anyone that partners with the Holy Ghost child of God has access to divinity in totality. The Holy Ghost is the tact team partner team partner in the operation of the supernatural it helps us to win and to enjoy the supernatural life the holy ghost child of god does not impose his will on us he plays the game of the supernatural in the space you allow him so he functions according to the space you give him. Little space, little functionality of the Holy Ghost. Massive space. So the Holy Spirit is going to function in your life to the extent to which you allow him in your life. Are you aware that many of you called believers don't even know the Holy Ghost? You don't invite him in your business. You don't invite him in anything. You don't even talk to him to help you. And Jesus said, when I go, I will leave you another comforter, another paracletos. The word paracletos means your teacher, your guide, your deliverer, your intercessor, your advocate general, and my, your helper. Ha! The Holy Spirit helps you to communicate the spiritual realm. To develop intimacy with divinity. Until we become one with the spirit. It helps us to interact with the energy of the divine. The Holy Ghost helps us to interact with the supernatural realm. The Holy Spirit assists us to conduct the dimensions of God. So that we can transmit the essence of God into our realities. So that we can transmit the essence of God into our physicality and environment. He helps us to function in the dimensions of God. So that we can bring out that dimension to function in our realities. Hmm. Energy. The spiritual reality functions by energy. The spirit realm functions by the energy of the divine. Can I shock you, sir? Energy is the definition of the height from where you operate from. Energy is the energy of the divine. Is the definition of the height from which a believer functions from. Because every believer is from above. is wired to the energy of the spirit. You can know the word of God and not experience manifestation of the world. Because your speaking lacks supernatural energy to bring to pass what you are saying. So your speaking is a waste until it is back with divine energy. The energy of the spirit and the Holy Spirit is the one that regulates the energy that comes to you. Just like Nepa regulates the, the capacity of the vault that is released to your life, the Holy Ghost also determines the kind of energy that functions in your life. Many of you have been operating life with low current. <laughs> 
You have a freezer, you have a fridge, and you have low current, you have no future in that environment. Everything will spoil after two days that you put in the freezer. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? So, sir, when you lack this energy of the spirit, sir, you will lack capacity to trap the possibilities that your word hosts. Your word hosts some dimension of possibility. The possibility of your life is controlled by your speakings. The possibilities of your life is controlled by your declaration. But when you lack the energy of the spirit, you cannot trap the energy that your world hosts. Because man are not judged by their outlook. Man is judged by every word that comes out of his mouth. And the Bible says every weapon of darkness can be condemned by your word. When you sit in judgment, whatever you say, it flesh the outcome. So hear me, sir. And hear me very well. We can only manifest possibilities when we understand how to activate the energy of the spirit where our wars is the propelling force. So to command the energy of the spirit, we must enter into a functional relationship with the Holy Ghost. Conscious relationship. We are the Holy Spirit hate to be ignored. Hate to be grieved. The Holy Spirit hate to be relegated. If you do not identify or recognize him, you will suffer a lot of defeat. Because your physicality needs the energy of the spirit to, 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 to ride. So the Holy Ghost is the platform for generating spiritual energy. The Holy Ghost is not a junior brother of God. He is the third person to be revealed. Not the third person in ranking. Not the third person in power. He's only the third person to be revealed. He is not junior God. Not junior Jesus. The Holy Ghost is God. If you don't recognize him, your life will be bankrupt of happenings of the supernatural. There are so many possibilities that are shut up in your spirit that you need to conduct with the energy of the spirit. Hear me, sir. You need the Holy Ghost to assist you conduct such power. Sir, the Holy Spirit is not to enslave you. He is to restructure your life for maximum profitability. So, if the Holy Ghost has no control over your life, he has no control over your soul, sir, you will not be able to traffic in the dimensions of the spirit that allows the energy of God to influence your physical dealings. So, you'll be doing business, but you'll be doing business as an empty man. You'll be interacting and negotiating, but your negotiation will lack spiritual backup. And so any man that carries spiritual backup will hit you on the floor on the spot. Because life is more than what the eyes can see and the ears can hear. <laughs> Sir, it's time to recognize the governor of the spirit realm. <laughs> if you ignore him, you'll be a slave to spiritual traffics, to spiritual entities. Hear me and hear me well. Our fathers in the faith, most of them are not theologians. But hear me, sir. They operated the supernatural like drinking coke because they partner with the Holy Ghost. People like Catherine Coleman, five rows in the front is empty until five minutes to her coming in. They will fill it with deformed people, crippled, blind, deaf, all kinds of cacetic and moribundic cases. The moment she enter the hall and say, Holy Ghost, you are here. <sighs> Everyone start rising. People start walking. Even if one is not healed, she goes back for six hours crying, why are they not healed? Why are they not healed? Every time if you go behind her compound, you see her talking, Holy Ghost, you know, I, I don't know, this meeting, how do you, how do you, how do you what do you say about it? <laughs> the other time, this is how you moved me. You see how you're going to move me today? And she can talk with the Holy Ghost 16 to 18 hours. 
No wonder she commanded tangible effusions, tangible presence, feelable, capable, feelable, palpable presence. That when she waved to people, they fall like purple leaves. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Men like Alexander Dowen, who healed over 500,000 souls in Chicago, Illinois, and built a city called Zion City, like Papa Debo is building Redemption Camp. Redemption Camp is on the increase. Today, Zion City is one of the last settlements in, in, in Chicago. And he healed people to a point that he was sued to, to the law court for healing people without medical license. Because of the tangibility of the unction, he partnered with the Holy Ghost. Men like Charles G. Finney, men like F F Fadanaj, men like Sabrat Marovia, men, <laughs> men like, like Amy Sipomephrosin, the founder of the, met of the, of the Four Square Gospel. They call her the mayor of Los Angeles, of California. California alone is bigger than Nigeria times two. In the U.S., these men, they are secret they, because they operated superhuman energy. Their secret is rooted in their fellowship with the Holy Ghost. We saw that even Elijah, the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 4, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. That is the difference. That is what makes you supernatural. And it was when Jezebel had caught off the prophets of the Lord and Obadiah took an hundred prophets and gave them in the caves. That's not what I'm looking at. Verse 46. Verse 46, I beg your pardon. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he outweed. He outran and the hand of the Lord, Calibus, was upon Elijah and he guided up his lung and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. It's like traveling to Kephi. Elijah told Ahab, saddle your axe. Oh yeah, start going. <laughs> when Ahab was in massacre, Elijah wrapped his mantle and started running. When he got to massacre, he told Ahab, bye-bye. He arrived Kephi. I was drinking coke before Ahab arrived. My friend, it's called superhuman energy. Only the energy of the divine can propel a man in that kind of capacity. My friend, to be a Christian without relying on the supernatural. My friend, if you a native doctor, an occultic man is better than you. He has more advantage than you in the physical world. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? Only the supernatural can enable a man to do such dimension of exploit. Strong spirit, unbeatable energy. It's a function of partnership with the Holy Spirit. When you fellowship with the Spirit, sir, there will be an intense spiritual energy directed at your life. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. When they prayed, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Let's see the energy that came out of their prayer. When they had prayed, the place was shaking, was shaking. We are they assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Look at verse 33. They spoke the word of God with boldness and verse 33 and with great power. Someone say energy. Gave the apostle the weakness of the resurrection of Jesus and great grace was upon them. He didn't say they were depressed. He didn't say they were dragging their feet. He didn't say they were, oh, they were serving God with a locomotive movement. The Bible said with great grace they preach the word of God with great grace. They serve God. Show me a weakling. Show me a depressed person. Show me a person who drags his feet. I show you a man who lacks the energy of the spirit, which is a function of partnership with the Holy Ghost. So, Jesus never did exploit until he grew and was strong in the spirit. The Bible says, and he was strong in the spirit. I am asking you, are you waxing strong in the spirit? All that uh, sin is choking all the chamber of your spirituality. Consistent iniquity and lack of conscience has killed all the chamber of spirituality such that your supernatural life is nothing to write home about. Headache can kill you. Ordinary headache. One which hissed, you are finished. 
One coronavirus. If they don't take you to hospital by mistake, you are finished. Let see NCD just see you. NCDC. Just you. Just quarantine you for five days. You are gone. <laughs> you are gone. <laughs> The Bible said in Luke 4, 14, he returned in the power of the spirit. In the, what did he return with? Energy of the spirit. What did he return with? Energy. Of, I pray for somebody. If there is nothing I am not sure of, I'm sure of this one. Every one of you are not the son of a voice. Today, you are returning with the energy of the spirit. What conquered you last week? You are returning to conquer it. What defeated you last week? You will defeat it. Child. The bad story that made you sad last week. Lift up your hands and say, I am receiving a good story in place of it. Sir, power is an overflow of a life that is consciously partnering with the Holy Spirit. Energy is an overflow of the life that is fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. So, sir, the energy of the Spirit is the essentiality of spirituality that is manifesting on the homo sapient. If you don't have the habitation of the Spirit, you can never go far. The Spirit, you cannot rule. Without the Spirit, you cannot rule in the spiritual realm. Without the Spirit, you cannot rule among mortals. Without the spirit, sir, you cannot be known in the realm of the immortals. The supernatural is a life beyond and above mortals. It is a spirit that opens us to the supernatural. It is the spirit child of God that opens us to action and executions of the intentions of God for our life. Because the spirit of God is a spirit of action and it is a spirit of execution. Sir, the spirit authenticate our spirituality any day, any time. He validate the energy we carry. Sir, the overflow of the spirit in our life is what we call power. The overflow of the spirit of God on our life is what we call energy. So the Holy Ghost child of God is a leader, is a driver, is a guy, is a pathfinder, is a way maker in spiritual matters. He's a leader, he's a guide, he's a way maker in spiritual matters. Life is too complex to navigate your life without the Holy Spirit. Your life is too complex to be navigated by natural skills. It's too complex to be navigated by human senses. My friend, divine GPS is needed to navigate this dangerous route of life. This dangerous way of life. You need divine GPS. The Holy Ghost is the giver of divine GPS. The manufacturer of divine GPS. The Holy Ghost sir, often teleguides you into the places of upliftment. So every morning, they spend time to pray in the spirit. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 7 to 8. Without the Holy Ghost, sir, you will walk in emotion. You will walk in emotion and not in divine direction. Without the Holy Ghost, sir, you will make decisions based on sentiment and not based on discernment. You will make decisions based on sentiment and not based on discernment. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I. For thou didst call me. And Eli perceived. Calabasa. Spiritual men are men that have great perception. They understand when God is speaking and when God is talking. My friend, the Holy Ghost can be around, but if you lack perception, you cannot manifest the supernatural. So you must be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And one of the ways to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost is pray in the spirit and be quiet. Pray in the spirit and be quiet. Sing in the spirit. Make melody in your heart unto the Holy Ghost and sing psalms and sing new songs and make worship. Let your worship go to the heavens and the Holy Spirit will begin to sharpen your sensitivity and you begin to operate with discernment of spirit and you will not operate with sentiment anymore. There are people who come to be your friend. You say, you want to be my friend? You say, okay, no problem. Then your heart, you don't want to be their friend because the Holy Ghost have given you some signals. They tell you, do some business and invest. You just can't do it because there are some signals you are getting from the womb of the spirit. So the Holy Ghost guides 
you to who to marry. He guides you what business to invest. He guides you into destiny decisions that will not make you blunder or falter or go down. And hear me, sir. There are people, it is the Holy Ghost that walk them out of your life. There are people, it's the Holy Ghost that walk them out of your church. Don't go and beg them to come back. Because coming back is delayed. When Ezekiah begged for another 15 years, he came back to a child called Manasseh. Manasseh became the most wicked king that ever existed. It was Manasseh <laughs> that showed the king of Babylon all the gold in the house of the Lord. When he showed him, oh, the prophet came and said, who asked you to show him? He will come back for all of these things. So the Holy Ghost is the leader, is the commander of the spirit realm. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, I want to partner with the Holy Spirit. I don't want to live my life outside of the Holy Spirit. I receive grace to walk with the Holy Spirit in all dimension. Lift up your hands. Say, Holy Ghost, I recognize you now. You are welcome in my life. You are welcome in my life. Fill me with your presence. With the energy of the divine. Can somebody speak in tongues for just 30 seconds? Just recognize him. If you can't speak in tongues, just tell him, Holy Ghost, I welcome you right now. Fill me. Fill me with your presence. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your name is your name. Breathe, Lord. Oh, sing it, everybody. Just breathe your name upon, upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your name. Your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Number two buttons you must press to manifest the supernatural is consistency. It is in consistency you break the supernatural. You break through the supernatural. It is in consistency you break through the natural into the supernatural. Unfortunately, many of you are not consistent with God. So you have never experienced the trash of the supernatural because of your natural inconsistencies. Have you started? It is foolishness not to be consistent. I will come this far with God. It is stupidity not to be consistent because inconsistency makes you miss the supernatural. Inconsistency makes you not to go far in the journey of the spirit. The error of the five foolish virgins was their inconsistency. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 1 to 5. The Bible says they were waiting for their bridegroom. The kingdom of heaven shall be lacking to ten virgins. The spiritual realm, the kingdom of heaven means the supernatural realm, shall be lacking to ten virgins who took lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. What made them foolish? They, they that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. Well, the bridegroom tarried, he delayed to test their consistency. They all slumber and slept. They hear this at midnight. There was a cry. May behold, the bridegroom come and go ye to meet him. What they were waiting on God so long has finally arrived. But then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lambs. <laughs> And the foolish said to the wise, give us oil for our lambs are gone out. <laughs> but the wise answer saying, not so. Please, there be not enough for all of us. This journey is a personal race. Go get for yourself. Go get for yourself. They went by the time they come, the door is shut. Inconsistency. They were not consistent. 
My friend, the supernatural can never trust you until you are consistent. Consistent in prayer, consistent in giving, consistent in fellowshipping, consistent in your commitment to spiritual instructions. Sir, they were not there when the bridegroom came. Hear me, sir, because they were not there. Their breakthrough came. Their intervention came. Their savior came. But alas, we can see from the story of these foolish virgins that they could have waited a little more longer. They could have pressed a little further. They could have hold on a little longer. Many are in a hurry, so they miss God. Husband is not coming. They went and get pregnant. Just when God wanted to give them their husband the next month. A missionary came from America and the American people supported him with monies to come and give to the poor in where he is coming to preach. He preached the first night. He said, Lord, when do I give them the money? How do I identify them? And the Holy Ghost said, don't share the money. There is a woman who sits on the third rule. <laughs> on your right hand, you will find the woman, she wears, she wears, she wears white and black. That is the only clothes she has. When you come, give her the $10,000. Don't give it to 10 people. He said, I have found her faithful. That day she woke up and said, Lord, I am tired. Only one dress. No food to eat. I am tired of serving you. I will not go to church. So the missionary got up to preach. He went straight to the third row. He said, there is a woman that sits here. Lo and behold, it's a woman wearing red, red. He said, no, the Lord showed me white and black, uh, uh, skirt and white. The Lord says she sits here. All the church say, hey, because they knew her. That is her seat. He said, see, she's not there. The Lord said, on the third row. So whoever sits on the third row, I give it to him. So they hand over the $10,000. To somebody who must have prayed that day. Because I can't explain how. <laughs> what belongs to Esau is given to Jacob. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? Consistency. He said, when I would have healed Ephraim, her iniquity was discovered. When I would have healed the womb of, the wound of Israel, then her sin was uncovered. Many of you, when God will answer you, you take a short time into a journey of sin. You say, I'm tired. Let me sin a little. After all, I'll be righteous for so many times. Sir, the microwave generation is the reason why we lack the manifestation of the supernatural. Everybody is in a hurry. Because food can be cooked in five minutes, in three minutes. We believe that everything from God will come fast, fast. If it is not fast, it's not God. And the pastors of nowadays have taught us that it has to be fast, fast. We say it's oh, suppose, suppose. We say it's now, now, now. We say maza, maza, maza. We say it's in a hurry. We say God does it now. As much as we are speaking all these spiritual jargons, my friend, we are building a people that lack patience. Be followers of those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. This generation wanted now, now. They can't wait. They lack continuity. They lack consistency. They lack continuity consistently. And that is why they are not seeing manifestation. How many of you were aware that when Jesus was sent to heaven, telling them that you shall receive power, tarry, there were over 380 of them. There are many of you aware that when the day of Pentecost finally, fully, finally came, who did he meet in the upper room? 120 people. Where are the 260? No consistency. No consistency. 
even the king knew that Daniel would be free because of the degree of Daniel's consistency. I'm telling you, the consistency of Daniel, not even persecution could stop him. The consistency of Daniel, not even the threat of the king could stop him. The king knew that if there's anything I know this Daniel is his consistency. So the king knew that Daniel would be free. That's why when Daniel was to be thrown, he said, the God whom you serve continually deliver you. Despite conspiracy and blackmail against Daniel, they could not stop him. The supernatural showed up when it matters most. The supernatural showed up when they threw him into the lion's den. Lions were tame. Lions were turned to massaging pillows and mattresses. Lions were humbled for 12 hours not to eat the food they so desire and hungry for. Because a man who dared to be consistent engaged the supernatural. So the supernatural showed up. The consistency of Shedah makes an go open them up to a fireproof experience. Hear me and hear me well. If you are not consistent, you won't go far. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 16. We saw that it was a consistency of Daniel that catapulted him to the supernatural realm and began to manifest the supernatural. Then the king commanded that they should bring Daniel and cast him into the dens of liar. Now the king spoke to Daniel and said, The God whom thou servest continually, may he deliver you. Continually. It has to be consistent. The early apostles and disciples were consistent in prayer. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible says, at the hour of prayer, John and Peter went up to the temple to pray. Peter and John went to the temple to pray. At the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, they were consistent. Many of you are only consistent on Sunday. You are never consistent on Wednesday. You are never consistent to any spiritual instruction. That is why no matter how hard we pray for you, it has no, there is no manifestation, no reflection of the supernatural in your daily living. All you ever had is what you labored for. All you ever had is what you put your mind to work. You have never seen extraordinary hand functioning in your effort because of your lack of consistency. Sir, you must be consistent in sacrificial giving. You must be consistent in prayer. No wonder great power was the outcome of the life of the apostles because of their consistency. In Acts chapter 4, the verse 33, where the Bible said, they say, grant unto thy servant that with all boldness by the stretched forth of hands, such a wonder may be wrought. The Bible said, when they are prayed, the ground shook. And verse 33, the Bible said, with great power gave the apostle weakness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And with great grace was upon them. Verse 34, continue verse 34 neither was there any among them that lack where there's consistency lacking is destroyed your source becomes supernatural for as many are were possession of land houses sold them and brought the prizes to them that were sold and the bible said and they laid it at the apostle feet and distribution was distribution was made to every man according as he has need and finally that verse Joshua the apostle was Samuel Barnabas which being interpreted the son of consolation Levi and of the we can go on all of them so soul and gave. There was such a manifestation of God's power. Many of you started fellowship but you lack consistency. You started tithing but you don't know about your tithing life anymore. You are the greatest cheat in this life. You divert tithe at will. You borrow tithe at will. And many of you, the reason why I knew a lot of you were not consistent. In COVID-19 where there was no fellowship only, only 5% of the people were still tithers. Not because there's no money, but because we could not gather physically. They do not know that your consistency is beyond our physical gathering. Your consistency is, is a revelation you got from God in the area of tithings, in the area of giving. Whether you are in church or not, your tithes should follow. One man that was so consistent is Elder Ndubisi. In COVID, even if it's one naira, I will see an alert. Even if it is 10 naira, you will see an alert. And even if it is 5 naira, you will see his alert. Every time, if God gives him 3 times a week, you will see it's 5,000 times 3. Consistently, hear me. If this man does not become rich, I will be surprised. If this man does not rise financially, supernaturally, I, Talena, will be surprised. I will even question the justice of heaven. 
Because sir, how else can you know consistency? How else can you know consistency? Some of you, COVID-19 took you out of circulation for four months. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. As if you are natural. You are supernatural. Even if the disease come on you, to fall back. Jesus said, the priest of this world came to me and found nothing in me. You are not ordinary. You are not, you are not that kind. Pastor, what about pastors who die? Let them be dying. Your source is not pastor. Your source is supernatural. Let them be dying. Only God knows what they say on altar and say outside the altar. Because if you don't know what to say as a pastor, we also go through temptation. I told you a few weeks ago, the priest of Abuja came to me and said, I will kill you. You will die. I will kill you. Say you will not pass 48 hours. You have troubled me. I will kill you. I have done everything to bring you down. You have refused. I have come to kill you. And I scriptures began to rise from my spirit. And I look at the devil and I turn. I did. And I slept. I just slept. I didn't answer him. Because I know too much. Because I know it is impossible. For him to kill me, he must tear God's stomach and bring Jesus. Tear Jesus' stomach and touch me. If he can't do that, it is impossible, impossible. Many of you started sacrificially. But you hardly give nowadays. Your offering is, is, is deemed dwindling. Dwindling. Inconsistency. Silence the operation of the supernatural. In Exodus chapter 33 verse 11. Joshua the Bible said departed not. When everybody went to commit wodom, idolatry, Aaron and his men went down to commit idolatry. The Bible said Joshua, the young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. He has no business with God on the mountain. If the business was with Moses and God, Moses was in the, in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. You call yourself pastor, your general overseer have not left. You have carried your bag and run. You will never be anointed. If I stay 11 p.m., you stay 11 p.m. Spiritual things is not civil servant. You are a service. I call for a meeting, a service to bless the whole world. You know I need you. You deliberately refuse to come see me. As a service, you are not consistent. The heavens are marking you. Your inconsistency is the reason for your chronic poverty. Because God is the rewarder, not Joshua Talena. And the Bible says he looked at the, at the heart, not the outward appearance. The supernatural sir, does not speak for the inconsistent. The supernatural does not speak for the unreliable. The supernatural does not speak for those who are not committed to the cause of God and remain. I have been born again for more than 34 years. I have never one day Thought of backsliding. Not one. I have never one day seen ministry as ATM. I have never one day collected salary. I have not touched God's money that is not for me. That is why I give more than all of you in this church every Sunday. Because I discover that it is in my consistency that God prospers me. Sir, until you make consistency a personal thing between you and God, your life will not be open to the world of the supernatural. How do you need the supernatural? One of my sons went for an interview under United Nations. <laughs> there were 400 and something of them who came to write the exam. He come, he said, Papa, I'm afraid. I say, you are not a normal human being. Why are you afraid? I said, Deuteronomy 21. Open it. He opened it. Show, show it to us on the, on the screen. I said, open Deuteronomy 20. When thou goest out to battle against thy enemy, you see their horses and their chariots. A people more than you, be not afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with thee. He goeth out before you. He's the one that brought you out of the land of Egypt. He will go before you. Verse 2, continue, sir. And it shall be that when you come unto near the battle, that the priest, your pastor, shall appear and speak to you. Now, I am talking to you as your pastor. 
Even if it's one human being they want in that job, I cut you into two. I donate you. You say amen. They wrote the first one. I said, Papa, we are now 86. I said, why are you wasting your telephone? I say, you are the one with the job. He come again. He said, Pastor, Papa, remain four. I say, if you call this number again, the only time I want to hear you call this number is that they gave you that job. He said, yes, Papa. I said, shut off that your phone. Cut it off. He said, thank you, sir. And he called me. And he said, they picked him. I said, I'm not surprised. Why I can never be surprised because of the supernatural that is engaged on his affairs. What did I say? I said, Father, this guy is faithful. He's consistent in serving you. Please, I beg you, if you will not give him this job, please don't bless me. Don't ever give me one error until you honor him. God help me. Be consistent. Stretch your hands. I prophesy from the front to the back. Anything that is making you fluctuating like nepa light, I cause it from the root in the name of Jesus. I don't like your amen. I cause it from the root in the name of Jesus. Where did God place you? Adam, where are thou? He was not found in the place. Number three, I ran up with this. How do I manifest the supernatural? You must associate with fellow supernaturals. Associating with what? Fellow supernaturals. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Who you company with determines what accompany you. Who you follow, child of God, <laughs> determines what follows you. <laughs> Hear me, sir. <laughs> what who you walk with decide what works for you. He that walketh with the wise men shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be what? Destroy. Never walk with fools, no matter how blessed they appear. Don't walk with fools. If you stay around fire long enough, you will smell smoke. Am I right? If you stay with fire long enough, you will smell smoke. If you stay with men of the supernatural, very soon, you will ooze out. Supernatural essence. When carnal men are your friend, you'll be loaded with carnality. When all your friends are what they see in Instagram. When all your friends, what they discuss in Big Brother and Nudity is what you sit down and discuss. My friend, get ready. The spirit of lasciviousness, the spirit of lawlessness, the spirit of uh, uh, fornication will overshadow your life because you are who you hang out with. <laughs> the hang out with men who talk about Charles G. Finney. The hang out with men who talk about Andrew uh, A.W. Tozer. Men who talk about Catherine Coleman. Men who talk about who talk about uh, Ora Roberts. How the move of God. How there was a revival in Chicago. Revival in Scotland. How the power of God moved. Uh, talk about men who discuss how many hours they pray by day. Talk about men who discuss how they fasted. Talk about uh, when they talk about how they experienced and saw Jesus. Jesus in a revelation, my friend, something charges in your spirit. You begin to smell the supernatural. Sir, if you company with he goat, you will soon smell his If you company with he goat, you will soon smell his Your association determines your assimilations. Where you enter determines what enters you. Where you enter, that's why I wonder people who go to Uhum church. That's where they church they born from. That's where I come from. After testing the power of God and the light of God, you can go to a dead church and just sit there. I question your spirituality. There's yeah, somebody that say, I have left Pentecostal church. I have gone back to my mother's church. Your mother's church. Where the, where the pastor does not know the Bible. Your mother, because of offense, you went back to your mother's church. That is why you are ordinary. One tiny Muslim will sack you from that office. 
One tiny occultic idiot will flush you out of your inheritance. But with the supernatural at work and interplay in your life, they dare you, they die. Somebody told me that Papa, some people are saying you are, you are too much a killer. You are too much a killer. People should not be fearing you and I laugh. Say if they don't fear me, should they fear Satan? The supernatural. The supernatural makes you to be feared any day, any time. That is why your pastor doesn't have too many friends. And most of my friends, most of them are not even in this town. Because I choose my friends. And any of my son, the company with the wrong people, I cut him off. It don't, even if we enter ministry the same day. Wrong, one day of wrong company can eat up your spirituality of 20 years. What are you looking for? Holy Ghost filled tongue talking lady. Marrying a man who doesn't know road to church. Smoking and pouring it on your face. You say I will get him saved. You. Your calamity have started. The supernatural will be empty in your marriage. That's why if it doesn't provide, you will die of starvation. But when the supernatural is in operation, even your husband will ask you, how did you cook this afternoon? Because as he went, he didn't know how it worked. Somebody sent it. Something happened. You are wired. You can never be stranded. I welcome you to a season of manifesting the supernatural. I welcome you to a season We are the supernatural. We envelope you, engulf you, and saturate you. I welcome you to that moment where you will see God for yourself and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare in the name of Jesus, anything in your atmosphere that is choking the chamber of your spirit, blocking your spirituality, eating up your capacity to function in the spiritual realm as the Lord liveth, Whose I am and whom I serve, I command that blockade remove. I say remove. I say remove. I charge your life with spiritual fire, with spiritual capability, with spiritual propensity. Lift up your hands, say, Lord, I give myself to the supernatural. I refuse to be ordinary. I refuse to function in ordinary life. Why am I destiny? Why am I business? Why am my life to the supernatural? Clap your hand and pray that prayer. Why am I life? Why am I destiny to the supernatural? Set my soul on fire. Increase my fire dimension. Ilaquatolo Brandagabalagadabas, Recos Capriante Legras, Satalabras, 